Welcome. This program is about a revolutionary new concept in test and measurement equipment. The HP 5371A Frequency and Time Interval Analyzer. The HP 5371A complements the oscilloscope in the time domain and the spectrum analyzer in the frequency domain by allowing you to see signals in the modulation domain. What makes this possible is a unique feature called continuous measurement. Until now, we've used electronic counters to make frequency and time interval measurements. These counters take a frequency measurement over a set gate time, then stop, compute, and display the result. Meanwhile, valuable information about the signal is lost. With continuous measurement, however, the 5371 can make frequency measurements back to back with no dead time. Processing is done after the measurement block is complete, up to 1,000 measurements later when using the 5371 to analyze the data, and up to 4K when using a computer. The 5371 also has analysis and display features that turn measurement data into valuable information. Because this capability is built in, you can see graphic display simply by pressing a button. Finally, the flexible menu screens make the 5371 convenient and easy to use. Using the 5371 can save valuable production test time. This program will help you understand how it works so you can use it to solve your measurement problems. We'll show you what's happening inside the instrument. Then, we'll give you examples of how to make measurements using real signals and the flexible menu screens. Signals enter through a wideband front end that can detect pulses as narrow as one nanosecond. Next, the signal is routed to a time sampler. Here, specified events, such as zero crossings, are counted and timed. This raw data, events and time, is then stored in memory. From here, the raw binary data takes one of two routes. It can be sent through the HPIB interface for analysis by an outside computer, or it is sent to the analysis section of the 5371. Results are then shown graphically on the display screen, or sent in floating point or ASCII format through the HPIB interface to an outside computer. Now that we've seen how the 5371 works in general, let's see what happens inside as we are making three different types of measurements. To make a continuous frequency measurement, we count single trigger events, in this case, zero crossings, and at user-defined intervals, tag them with time. As each zero crossing is detected, an event counter counts the event. Simultaneously, a time counter counts clock cycles that are effectively 200 picoseconds long. Then, at predetermined intervals, defined by the user, trigger events and associated times are latched and stored. Unlike traditional frequency counters, the 5371 does not stop between measurements to store and process the data. Instead, it continues counting new events and times while it is storing those already latched. That means there is no dead time between measurements, so no information is lost. With this continuous count feature, data can be latched very quickly and stored in memory as fast as every 100 nanoseconds. The 5371 gathers event and time data in this way until an entire measurement block is taken. Only then does it stop and analyze the data. A block consists of a continuous sequence of measurements up to 1,000 when using the 5371 alone and up to 4,095 when using a computer to analyze the data. The 5371 can analyze data in a variety of ways. It can make a series of frequency measurements, events divided by time, period measurements, time divided by events, or continuous time interval measurements where time and events are displayed separately. In each case, 
the internal hardware counts events and time in the same way, but the results are calculated differently. Unlike frequency measurements, which have a single trigger event, time interval measurements usually involve both a start and a stop. The triggers may be a rising to a falling edge on one signal, such as a pulse width, a rise time measurement on a single edge, or edges on two separate signals. Let's make a time interval measurement on two separate signals. As before, we are keeping track of events and time. But this time, we are time tagging two events rather than one. Using both event counters, each pair of start and stop triggers is latched simultaneously with a time count. Since it takes 100 nanoseconds to store the contents of each latch in memory, these start-stop pairs can be recorded every 200 nanoseconds. If events happen faster than this, they will be counted but not timed. The calculation shows the time interval measurements and notes the events that were not time tagged on each channel. With time interval measurements, like this one, you always measure from a start to a stop. The result is always positive, and the minimum interval is 10 nanoseconds. Plus minus time interval measurements are a variation on this. This type of measurement allows you to measure intervals down to zero. And if a stop occurs before a start, the time interval may even be negative. All of the measurements we've discussed so far begin and end synchronously with an input signal trigger event, providing the highest resolution possible. A continuous totalized measurement allows you to begin and end measurements independent of the input signal's trigger events. Suppose you want to measure the startup time of an oscillator. In this case, the 5371 will count events at time intervals you select, even when the event count is zero. The 5371A can also make these kinds of measurements. The operating manual explains each one in more detail. Now that we've seen how the 5371A works, we'll show you how to use it. There are four easy steps to follow. First, choose the measurement function. Second, select the number of measurements to be made. Third, select an arming mode. And fourth, identify the trigger condition. To show you how to make these selections, we'll take a look at two real examples, programming the menus as we go. In the first example, we want to measure how long it takes a VCO to settle on a new frequency after the input voltage is stepped. Using another reference signal, we can see what the frequency does both before and after the step. We hold off the start of a measurement for a specified period of time in this case, 200 microseconds. We will start measuring here. And we want to measure over this one millisecond time period, sampling the frequency every one microsecond. Finally, we want to do something that can't be done on other counters, that is, capture the information in a single pass or measurement block. Before programming the menu, connect the reference signal to the external arm input and the signal to be measured to the channel A input. First, we go to the function menu and choose frequency on channel A as the measurement function. Second, we select the number of measurements to be made. To capture one millisecond of data at one microsecond intervals, we choose one block of 1,000 measurements. Third, we select an arming mode. There are four major categories of arming options. Automatic, hold off, sampling, and both hold off and sampling. If we select automatic, the 5371 will make measurements immediately and as fast as possible, up to every 100 nanoseconds. 
hold off controls the start of a block of measurements. Sampling controls the pacing of each measurement within the block. By choosing hold off and sampling, we can hold off the start of the block of measurements and also control the pacing of each measurement. In this case, we select time hold off and interval sampling arming. We hold off the start of a measurement for a specified period of time after an edge, in this case, 200 microseconds. We'll sample the signal at specified intervals of time, in this example, every one microsecond. The 5371 function menu describes what you've selected. After a positive edge of the external arm, delay 200 microseconds, then arm a block of measurements. Following the block arming condition, arm sampling on the measurement channel after one microsecond intervals. Notice the screen also tells us our total acquisition time will be one millisecond. Fourth, using the input menu, we define trigger conditions on the measured channel and on the external arm. We select separate input channels since we have a single trigger event measurement and we define the trigger event in terms of slope, positive or negative, and level. The trigger level on the measured channel can be selected manually by setting a voltage level or automatically by setting a percentage of the peak-to-peak -peak signal. In this case, we choose manual and set the level at zero volts. The external arm level is set to one volt. After completing the input menu, we select single to take one measurement block and then stop. Now we can view the results either numerically or graphically. Selecting a time variation graph, we can see the VCO step response, frequency versus time. We see that we acquired one millisecond of data. The signal ranged from 9 to 10 megahertz approximately 500 microseconds after the measurement was armed. For a hard copy, we simply connect a printer and set up the 5371 to print. Our second example is a time interval measurement. We will show how, with the 5371, we can measure and characterize the pulse width stability on these detected pulses from a radar transmitter. The signal is a stream of negative going pulses in groups of five. A sync signal is available to tell us each time the pulse stream begins. After each rising edge on the sync signal, we make five pulse width measurements. We select time interval A to B as the measurement function. Next, the number of measurements. To get a good statistical sampling, we'll take 2,000. Since we're measuring five pulses at a time, we select 400 blocks of five measurements each. We select an edge hold-off arming mode. We'll hold off the start of the measurement until after a positive edge on the external arm. After the edge, the instrument will sample automatically. Next, the input menu. Since we can only define one trigger event per channel, we put the instrument in common mode. Unlike the typical setup in which the input channels are separate, common mode ties the channel A input to both channel A and B input circuitry. Much like a traditional time interval counter, we can now define the start trigger as the falling edge of channel A and the stop trigger as the rising edge of channel B. For each channel, we select single auto mode and set the levels for 50%. In this mode, the 5371 automatically determines trigger levels at the beginning of the first measurement block. The external arm level is again one volt. A histogram graph shows how the results are distributed and we can even see the histogram growing as the instrument acquires more and more data. The 5371 also gives us a statistical summary where it computes the mean, maximum, minimum, and standard deviation, important parameters for people who design, manufacture, and test radar transmitters.
The frequency and time interval analyzer will take its place along with the oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer as an indispensable tool for signal measurement and analysis in the new modulation domain. As we've seen, the 5371 provides a new look at signals as they change over time, making it possible for you to retrieve data that could not be easily obtained before. Continuous measurement makes this possible by allowing you to take frequency measurements back to back with no dead time in between. Built-in analysis and display features turn the data into valuable information. And the flexible menu screens make the 5371 easy to use. We've only scratched the surface in our discussion of what the 5371 can do. If you have any questions or need help in solving your particular measurement problem, be sure to contact your Hewlett-Packard field engineer.